Hi, my name is Daniela Araujo. I am 22 years old and I am a national youth poet and spoken word artist. So I was always a good writer. Like when I was a child growing up, my writings and stuff like that, they were so good that my teachers used to like paste them on the wall after every composition that I did. And I remember at this meeting, she told my mom, my teacher in grade four at that point, at that time, she told my mom that I write like an adult. And it's crazy because sometimes all you really need is like your parents to kind of know that you have a talent and nurture it. But in my case, I didn't have that. So it took me until I was finished with school and stuff like that, I was like 17, to discover that on my own after and nurture it on my own. So once I would have um, decided that, okay, I have this talent for writing and stuff like that, I just kind of got into public speaking and then the writing the spoken word poetry and stuff like that came after. It was inspired by a song actually. One, my very first poem that I wrote was inspired by a song. I was going through a heartbreak <laughs> and there was a song, right? I was going through a heartbreak and I heard this song and I'm like, I can relate so much to this song because I feel the words, but I still felt as though there were parts of it that was missing. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna add my own part. And then I realized in that moment that a lot of people are not going to read your work the way you want them to read it, which means that in order for you to hear my work the way I want you to hear it, I have to say it. I always believe that there's power in the voice. And for me, if I know that my voice is powerful enough to you know, cause an avalanche, then I'm going to use it. So um, I have seen how the voices of others, and not only the voice, but the art form in general has inspired lives, changed lives, so why not use that? It's not really about, I won't say it's about the loving, it's not, I won't say it's about the love of the art, but it's about loving the impact that it creates. At least that's what it is for me. I love to go on stage, I love to write pieces, and at the end of it, when people, you know, see it or hear it, they're able to say, that piece made me change my mind or that piece changed my life because I've had so many experiences. I've done pieces on depression, I've done pieces on suicide, mental health and when people hear these things and they see it, they would come to me, they would message me in my inbox and say, when I saw this piece, this is what I was going through and this piece saved me because you made me realize that there's light at the end of the tunnel and that's what I love. I love to inspire and so extensively I love writing because writing is what helps me to inspire. I think all the different forms of art plays a very vital role in the preservation of our culture, but poetry specifically, it's, it's unfolding our story. It's unfolding the story of my ancestors, my people, all the different tribes on stage. That's exactly what I do. Um, so it's telling our story in a way that it has never been told before. There's a lot of things that a lot of people don't know, especially our current generation of indigenous um, youths that are coming up now, because we live in a modernized world. So a lot of our culture is being lost. I believe that poetry has a way of sharing or practices or beliefs or sayings or stories or tales or history. Every single thing can be told and unfolded through poetry. So it's more than just performing, it's preservation. It's preservation of our identities, preservation of our culture. It's preservation of so many things. My grandmother would have told me so many stories back in the days, and these are now stories that I tell in the form of poetry. Everything that I've learned in the village where my mom is from, I put that in poetry, and I come back here in you know this area where a lot of people don't know what's happening and I share that. So not only do I get to know it, but you get to know it as well. And if you're interested in finding out more, obviously you're gonna dive a lot more into the culture and that way we preserve it together. I tell people all the time that everything that I do is intentional. So being a part of something and showcasing my culture is intentional because I don't believe that indigenous people, indigenous women, indigenous youth, indigenous craft, art, you know, talent in general, we don't have a lot of representation. Our culture, like I said, is one that is dying. So being able to go in certain spaces, the fact that I look like this, the fact that I have qualities of an indigenous person, that alone, whatever stage I step on, everyone, they know that, okay, she's indigenous and this is what she does. So it allows people to really understand and realize that there's a lot of talent within the indigenous community because when they see me, 
they're gonna be like, I wonder how many others are there. I've always told people that my entire aim is to kind of lead by example, to also bring out more of the indigenous youth within communities, to inspire them, to show indigenous girls specifically that you can break glass ceilings, you can shatter glass ceilings, you can break the stereotypes that are attached to indigenous youth. But it starts with taking that one single step and that is my entire aim, to lead by example and be the first of many. And I feel like with every stage that I step on, whether I'm performing a piece on indigenous, the indigenous culture, or whether I'm performing a piece on, you know, the revolution of our country or the culture or the heritage or whatever it is, every single stage that I step on, I step on that stage as an indigenous woman. I step on that stage as an indigenous youth. I step on that stage as, a, as an indigenous representative. So everything that I do on that stage, you know, it, it brings recognition to the indigenous community. I think that the industry, the creative industry in general, obviously it's a struggling industry, that is no secret, but it, it warms me, it gives me so much joy to know that the government is now, you know, actually catering to creatives where they're investing. And I've seen all these different types of cash grants, you know, you're getting a million dollars to probably do something within the creative industry to support your art. And I honestly think it's amazing because it's no secret that a lot of creatives lack resources. They want, we have so much talent here. And so the fact that the government is investing money and not only that, investing their time and energy because there's so many things that we see happening now and there's so many other creatives that are touching stages now that has never had that opportunity before. So I definitely think that it's, um, something that benefits the creative industry. I embrace my identity, the ethnicity that lies within me. A Wapishana girl living in the city. They don't see it, but the very blood of my ancestors is encrypted in my veins. I've heard stories and tales of their trials and pains, their beliefs, their religions, their sayings. You know, I've always wanted to trace and embrace the culture of my mother and my grandmother to see if it's like anything that I've read in the books. Thus far, the looks has been confirmed. I see my people and I know my people. Our wrong faces, flat foreheads, olive skin, slender lips, some thick, some thin, and of course, the indigenous blood flowing and glowing from within. Our culture is extraordinary, but according to history and what I see, my culture is dying. My culture is dying before I've even gotten a chance to experience the full ride. My culture is dying in a place that it brought to life. Over 12,000 years ago, my ancestors discovered the golden city of El Dorado, giving Guyana its name, its game, its music, its art, its heart. We played our role from the literal start. We are the start. But now in the 21st century, they're telling us to depart, telling us to unlearn our own history within our own communities as if, as if they know what it's like for us, as if they know what it's like to survive out in the wild, as if they've ever hunted in forests for food for their families and travel miles just to get an education, as if they can farm in the hot blazing sun for days, walk in jungle, fish in rivers, great cassava, hunt for wild meat, to wake with the rising sun just to fetch water from rivers and creeks, as if they can ever walk in the shoes of my ancestors and did what they did. After we've made major contributions in this country from our influential Amerindian men and women, who are joining hands and making stride all the way from the top of the map to the bottom. And for that, we ought to sustain our cultural heritage and identity while contributing to one Guyana.